Thanks for inviting me to take part. What do open building and appropriate technology share? I'd like to present four realities, raise four questions, and four possible answers. Reality number one, building environments that are alive are never finished. Existing solid buildings are renewed, <clears throat> often changing functions. Urban tissues intensify. So-called illegal but pervasive forces of change enliven buildings everywhere in the world. Village buildings are almost constantly being improved bit by bit. Neighbors with skills help those needing assistance. The question is, how can professionals help ordinary built environments to flourish? Open building gives an answer. Open building design seeks to deal with the proper distribution of design tasks in their hierarchical organization. This is the essence of the built environment as a living organism. So we need to learn tools for handing off work and for productive cooperation. And fundamentally, we need to learn to separate design tasks corresponding to time and social structure. However, Separation of design tasks does not require their distribution, only that we need to prevent small decisions from dominating the large ones. Reality number two, the world is awash in a constantly growing repertoire of technical solutions. Industrially produced products are available in a never-ending stream in worldwide supply channels at always diminishing cost. Products of industrialized factories are made into custom assemblies, a typical process that we can observe everywhere in the world. Given these realities, how should we think about appropriate technology. Again, open building has a potential answer. Technical solutions should be selected appropriate to the level of intervention at which they are applied. Introducing a three-level model, base building, fit out, and FF&E, or primary, secondary, and tertiary systems, each requires its own technical solutions based on life cycle uh, and cost and other aspects of building investment. Reality number three, the building industry is the only industry whose products keep getting more entangled and more expensive. Question, what can architects and allied professionals do to disentangle the knots of building and lower costs? An open building answer, argue for an infill or fit out industry to serve the individuality of families of different kinds <clears throat> over the life <clears throat> of the buildings. The existing housing culture, however, will not easily re yield control. Companies from outside the existing industry will need to step up and change the rules of the game, like Ford did for transportation.
Reality number four. Architects <clears throat> have borrowed research paradigms from other fields for far too long. The question is, why have architects worked out of an implicit knowledge base or relied on the master apprentice model for so long? Is preoccupation with creativity, artistic expression, and doing special buildings a cause of this dilemma? Is our ability to participate with authority and to be effective change agents illusory because of these preoccupations? Answer, which I'm sure a number of us today share. First, the education of architects must change, teaching new skills and attitudes for a postmodern time. A research agenda for architecture is needed built on an understanding of how built environments change and how a hierarchical organization of levels helps structure action. Finally, I'd like to offer some of my favorite open building environments. Papendrecht in the Netherlands, built in 1978, has 124 units, none of which are the same, in a continuous support structure that forms part of a continuous urban tissue in which each individual dwelling can be different and change over time. Next 21 in Osaka, a kind of three-dimensional urban design. 13 different architects originally designed each of the individual dwellings used, using a common facade system designed by another team. It continues to evolve and change and experiment with new technologies, new energy systems, and new forms of living in urban environments. Tila is the first of a series of raw space projects built in Helsinki and followed a pioneering num a number of pioneering projects built before it in Finland. The Eno Healthcare Facility in Bern, it was built first with a primary system designed by one architect without detailed programming, followed by detailed programming with the client, in a secondary system, and then a tertiary system designed by still another architect. And finally, the MIT's main group in Cambridge, Massachusetts, is constantly undergoing change, but retains a permanent sense of place. And the Discovery Building, a high school under construction now in Santa Monica, California, is a new loft building. Thanks for inviting me to take part. I look forward to further discussion.